Hi class, I wanted to do an example of how you can use uh, z-scores and bell curves to answer questions about normal distributions. So let's take a look at our example number two from section 20.6 of our notes. It said SAT scores were normally distributed with a mean of 500 and a standard deviation of 100. Our instructions then are to find in part A the percentage of those who scored above <clears throat> a 650. So because it's normally distributed in each of these cases, there's three cases, we'll first begin by drawing a bell curve. On the first bell curve, we want to find above 650. So in the middle, remember, we'll put our mean, which is given to us as 500. And 650 is larger than 500, so that's to the right of the mean. And we shade the region that we're interested in. We'd like above 650, above x equals 650. So to begin, we need to use our z-score conversion. So remember our z-score formula, and then we will go to our z-score chart. z equals x minus the mean over the standard deviation. So we'll use that together with our chart on page 848 and 849 of our book to figure out the areas to the left of every z-score. So here we see we need to find our z-score for 650. So we take x is 650 minus our mean, which is 500, divided by our standard deviation, which is 100. We'll get 150 minus, divided by 100. Always round your z-scores to two decimal places to the nearest hundredth, and you get 1.50. It's positive, so we'll look up in the positive z-chart on page 849 of our book to find out the area to the left of it. And when I do that, I get an area of 0.9332. So there is my area to the left, 0.9332. Area to the left of my z-score, area to the left of my z-score is 0.9332. But we're asked to find the region above, or to the right of our z-score. Remember, under the bell curve is the entire probability, which is 100%, or 1, if we're talking decimals. So to figure out the area to the right of a z-score, you'll first look up the area to the left of it in the chart, and then subtract it from 1. So we need 1 minus 0.9332, which gives us our answer of 0 0.0668. And of course, we're asked to write our area as a percentage here. So moving our decimal 2 to the right, we have 6.68%. That's the probability that you randomly pick someone who scored above a 650 on the SAT in the math section. All right, next up we go to part B. It says, find the percentage you scored between 550 and 650. Here we have to find two z-scores, look up two areas, and subtract the difference. The first one, 550, we'll talk about first. So 550 minus your mean of 500 divided by your standard deviation of 100 gives us 50 over 100, or 0 0.50. Looking up that z-score in our chart under the positive side will give us the area to the left of that z-score of 0 0.6915. 0 0.6915, the area to the left of that z-score. We already looked up the area to the left of the z-score for 650, because that z-score was 1.50 in our part A of the problem. So if I use that area, which we already found to be 0.9332, what we're really interested in is this shaded region. We know that from 650 below, that's 0.9332, and from 550 below, that's 0.6915. So the area between them can be found using the difference of these two areas. And when I do that, I get 0.2. 417, 0.2417, the area between them. Converting that to a decimal, oh, sorry, from a decimal to a percent would give us our answer of 24.17%. And finally, in part C, we're asked to find the percentage of people who scored below 300. We begin by noticing again that 300 is to the left of 500, the mean. And now we find the z-score for 300. So to do this, 
300 is our x minus 500, which is our mean, divided by our standard deviation, which is 100. We'll get negative 200 divided by 100, which gives us negative 2.00. Now we need to look that value up on the negative c score chart. When I do look that value up, I get 0 0.0228 as my area to the left, my area to the left of that z-score is 0 0.0228, which means as a percentage, 2.28% of people score below a 300. Well, I hope that helps make sense using these three examples. I hope that helps make sense a little bit for us um, of how we can use a bell curve and z-scores and a z-score chart to find percentages um, for normally distributed data. Well, that's all I have for you today. I hope that helps, and good luck practicing. That's the end of our material in 20.6. Bye.